<laughs> Hi, everybody. I have the long lost Elisa with me today. <laughs> it's me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm so glad that you're feeling good and you're back um, hanging out. And I wanted to chat with you a little bit today about the solar system and just kind of what's been going on with you. But the solar system seems to be a hot topic um, and kind of how how it happened that the earth ended up where it is. So you want me to give a sum up? Yeah, just a short sum up of how did earth get pulled away from where it was? Where was okay. it? Okay. Um, well, I mean, to sum it up, it's it take a minute. Okay. Um, the star here now is called Sol, S-O-L. Some people call it Sol, S-O-L. And uh, this is not Earth's uh, parent star, okay? Um, just going to run through it real quick. Like Saturn was actually Earth's parent star, okay? And before it was Saturn, it was uh, a brown dwarf, okay? And there were four of these brown dwarfs, and we call them planets today, which is Saturn, Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune, okay? Because whenever they came in close proximity with this star, Sol, uh, a, a weaker star, uh, will get its energy drained off of it from a more powerful star, okay? And and in the process of doing it, it knocks them down to what we would call gas giants, okay? Mm -hmm. um, but Saturn was uh, Earth's original star, and so was Mars. It was Earth and Mars that were connected to Saturn as a brown dwarf. And a dwarf, a brown dwarf will have a hue around it. It's like a colored bubble, Okay, and it's, it was called uh, the Purple Dawn because all of it was purple. And within this here purple bubble um, was Earth and Mars. Okay, and whenever these four brown dwarfs came too close to this star over here, or should say this star came too close to them, um, it, it caused it to all get into chaos. And, and, and the atmosphere of these stars were taken off of them because they were being, their energy was being drawn off of them. And in the process of this here, the planets, Earth and Mars, got ripped away from its parent star, its lover, its, its, its mate. And, uh, and because this star, Sol, knew that those planets had life on it, it was automatically pulling these planets to it to save them from the chaos that was happening. Okay, now it was so catastrophic that, as you know, that all of the gas giants have a lot of these little planetoids around it. Well, whenever you are jolting something, electroshock therapy, when you're jolting something, it's going to shit itself. Okay, and it did. It shit out all of these other little planetoids because it had the gas and the chemical compounds in order to do it. Okay, okay. Um, but now um, Saturn did it. It has a lot of other planets around it as well. But there was a massive collision on an epic scale of moons that we say it was right around the equator of it. And they couldn't keep up. In other words, it's like a race car track and they kept colliding into each other because it was such chaos. And therefore you have the, the ring around Saturn now. But Earth and Mars got pulled towards uh, this star's soul and ended up getting into an orbit around it. But the last thing that um, Saturn did before it settled down was it pretty much shit out Venus and gave birth to it. Okay, and it shot it across the solar system and like a whirlpool, it was being shot into the from the opposite direction. And over time, it slowed it down and forced it to go into the same direction as our planets now, but she spins backwards. Okay, um, but that's pretty much how it all came settling into the planets that we know now around this star, Sol. But the story before that and after that is actually very intriguing, very exciting. And if anything, it's one hell of a story. Um, and, and I'm going to be doing a, a video on all of this and starting from the beginning of it, uh, that's going to lead us up to now. And I'm going to do a slower version to help everybody understand how it all plays in together, you know, like one car after another, you know, one um, a segment yeah. after another. And uh, so me and Honey was talking about that so that we can get that information out to everybody that is interested in hearing it and expanding their imagination and realizing that it went from order to chaos back to order. Yeah. So, and I would like to be able to share that with uh, our brothers and sisters. So, 
Yeah, and we'll put that on honeyseagolden.com and it'll either be a class or like an information video depending on what it gets decided. And um, remember that there is an option. A lot of people have done what's called pay it forward. There is an option for you to attend that for free because people have actually paid to make sure that other people can go and see stuff like that. So yeah. if it really interests you, go fill out that form and you can do it for free if you need to. Um, otherwise, it's great to support Elisa and give her, you know, um, yeah. money for her life. And so, but let's talk. And also, Elisa's channel is going to be right below this. So go subscribe because she's going to be doing some amazing things. Um, you're going to be talking to somebody that is talking about divine birth, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and that's all changing. There's so much that's changing that's coming in. So talk yeah. a little bit about that. You gave me a great summary. Well, I'm actually calling it um, creation, not just procreation. Mm -hmm. And it is intentional um, creation of a couple whenever they come together. This, as far as I can, uh, my understanding of it is it used to be that whenever a couple decided to have a child, they would come together and they would pretty much write down, invent things, create things in their mind. I want this child to be beautiful, smart, intelligent, because this is an intentional procreation so that you can make a new creation and that has gotten lost and now think about it my brothers and sisters there are so many people that has procreated with non-intentions and it makes broken fractals of ourselves confused fractals of ourselves because there was no deliberate intention but if yet there was because whenever there's chaos in your mind chaos in your life and then you're trying to procreate what are you procreating you are procreating another chaotic child you know or a confused child but imagine if we can take that energy back that source back and make it a pur purposeful and intentional creation uh, it would it would make couples come together and know that it is an obligation of these two higher souls, you and your mate, and 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 deciding to create something on purpose instead of it just being not thought about. And look at the the young muck that we have today because of that. So if we can change that, we can you know start off doing things more correctly with our hearts and our intentions. And also, yeah. my brothers and sisters, a lot of you did not know this that um, before they put the dome up, women would only have periods whenever they decided to have a child. It was self-controlled. And since they put us in here, they actually force us to have that every month because they want us to procreate um, irresponsibly to, to create cattle, to create more that they, they can control. Okay. And, and whenever you start thinking about this here stuff, it makes you have a different perspective. <laughs> so, so yeah. Yeah. But we need to take that control back is what I'm saying. So. It is time. There's, um, I did a show the other day with two people who they're really tapped into the sixth density kind of like certain things in the sixth density. One of them is doing gardening mm -hmm. and herbs. And then the other one is doing music. And the music is a basically a communion with nature. Right. And that is birthing the right done the way that it should be so there's so many things that are about to come in that are like golden age behaviors mm -hmm. and we can start doing that now right so right. why not really yeah. is my attitude well like, i did meet it a very impressive young lady um and her name is dana and i would like to introduce her to our dana and then uh, do a video on this because uh, this is part of her humanitarian project. And it's really got me intrigued. So I, I want to be able to introduce it back to the public and, and let them, you know, just go with it and understand that there, there is something that is a spiritual, you know, procreation, a spiritual fertility that is still does exist. It's just that we forgot about it and how to use it. So and, and if I can get her to agree to this, everybody, then I'm sure that you will absolutely love it. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, I think that's going to be an amazing interview. I do. It's really, I really interesting. Too. Yeah. <laughs> so 
what else have you been doing? What else you've been up to lately? <laughs> we haven't heard from you for a while. <laughs> Well, um, I did tell you that I actually had uh, my very own Mandela effect. Mm. And um, I wanted to share that with everybody because if anybody um, actually plays um, video games by chance, one of you, maybe somewhere out there, you know, uh, will understand this here. But um, I was um, sitting on my bed and I was playing um, a, a video game and it's called Demon Souls. And, um, and, and just, I don't know, I was just sitting there waiting for somebody to summon me outside of a boss door. And then all of a sudden I seen this vortex that opened up in front of me and, and it just sucked me through. I mean, it sucked me through so fast that I was just bouncing back in my position that I already was. And I'm like, what the hell was that? You know, and, and I'm looking around trying to figure this out. I'm like, what just happened? Because I literally felt like I got sucked through something. And then uh, as the day went on, it's still, you know, I'm thinking like, what was that? And then I noticed that in my game, Demon Souls, um, I'm closing it out and all this kind of good stuff. And then and now, <laughs> now it says Demon's Souls. And that is incorrect. Uh, I've been playing this game for two years and um, I know that it was Demon's Souls. Uh, and now it's Demon's with apostrophe S Souls. And that is incorrect. So I went, uh, you know, looking at my friends and stuff. Hey! What's this game called? <laughs> because I'm testing myself. And everybody says the same thing, Demon Souls. But yet it's not Demon Souls, it's Demon's Soul. So if anybody's out there had that experience, um, please share that with me and let me know. But I noticed that after uh, this here uh, shift, I guess, and this Mandela effect, it made me realize I must have popped into another version of myself. And then um, I, the, everything was calm and quiet after I got over my shingles and my shoulder and everything was like so peaceful, I could hear a pin drop. And then I noticed that this here vortex shift thing happened. And then after that, uh, the Mandela effect. <laughs> and then after that, I had some very wonderful surprises pop out of the ether at me. So I, I definitely felt like there was some kind of a shift or some kind of uh, movement that happened that took me with it. So I want to know if any of my brothers and sisters have been feeling this shift here lately, but I'm very fortunate that I actually had that visual experience in real time uh, to be able to share this with everybody. So I do know that there is some major things going on and things are flowing a lot more easier. So, mm -hmm. and let's see, what else have I been doing? Hmm. I think uh, the Mandela effect is great. I think there's going to be more of them. Yeah. So I pay agree. attention. And if somebody who's asleep says, no. oh, well, I thought it used to be this, say the words. Oh, the Mandela mm -hmm. effect. And then yeah. maybe they'll go and have a look, you know, yeah. just like Home That's Depot. Like and now it's the Home Depot. Yeah. That was yeah. a pretty big one. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So it was like, I just couldn't believe I actually had my own personalized Mandela effect. And of course, you know, I've been calling out to the gamers, you know, uh, let me know, you know, what your thoughts is on this. And pretty much uh, so far, it just seems like it's just gone past everybody. They're not catching that because mm -hmm. they weren't paying attention. But I, you know, was paying attention and it was just like, I don't want to say pure luck, but I definitely think it was meant for me to see and notice, you know, that, that it is possible. So I think so too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially with that, like weird <laughs> I have those where you almost feel like you get sucked through something and then all of a sudden you're back. Um, and that doesn't happen very often, but usually when that does happen, it's like, oh, yeah, something's different. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it definitely looked yeah. like a tunnel, but it sucked me through it. So, and I was like, wow, mm -hmm. I never thought I was experienced <laughs> something like that, but it's definitely, um, but since then I had definitely feel like I'm more of like, um, uh, I'm in and out. You know, it's, it's like I'm here uh, sometimes, but then there's other times I feel like I'm, I'm in uh, auto mode because I'm off doing something else. And yeah. and I definitely feel that whenever um, I go to sleep and then I wake up, I get this feeling nowadays. It's like, wow, I, I'm back here now, you know, realizing that I was somewhere else. And, and that is pretty cool because I think a lot of our brothers and sisters are experiencing that, that in and out, one foot in, one foot out kind of feeling. And, mm -hmm. uh, and it's getting more and more to where we're just sliding right on into it. So, yeah, I feel like it used to be more just at night and now it's like, it could happen any time of the day. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm mm -hmm. moving slower. I'm more tired. 
Um, I feel weird, like kind of foggy. And that usually means that part of you went somewhere else to do something else. Yeah, I have had quite a few people, um, I would say 40 and up, that actually says, you know, I have just find myself falling asleep in the weirdest places because I get so tired, you know, and uh, and I, I I have experienced that myself. I'll get just sit down. And all of a sudden, I'm just so sleepy and then I'll doze off. And I was like, God, I'm getting old. But that's <laughs> that's not it. It's like uh, those are moments that you're actually being called to do something else because it can't be that this is happening to so many of us. It's not a coincidence. It has no. to have a meaning and a purpose. So and so don't get mad at yourselves or upset with yourselves or, or think you're old, my brothers and sisters. It's just these things are new and they're happening for a reason. So, yeah, there the next um, I get two years. So the next two years are going to be very bizarre. Yes. Um, it's like we're moving through this time period where we're adjusting, we're changing, um, we're moving into actually being ascended. Right. And most of us, it's going to be a little process for us. So don't be hard on yourself. Yeah. And I've also had uh, uh, several people ask me, you know, like my definition of ascension. And um, from what my higher self has showed me, that it is an overall thing. But the ascension that you personally are looking for is right up here. It's the higher you raise your frequency, the higher you can maintain those thoughts, the, the higher you are in control of your own consciousness. That is your ascension. Okay. Now, all of us are ascending as well, but it's a personal thing to be added to the collective. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, just think about that as your ascension is to raise your vibration and keep the negativity away from you. And don't become desensitized. You know, because I've had that thrown at me too. What does God expect me to do? Be disestentized about the whole world. And it's going through this, that, and the other through, And, you know, another child dies or something like this here. No, nobody is asking you to be desensitized. But what you are being asked of as a creator is to accept it, that it's real. Because you cannot have dark without light. And you can't have light without dark. Is to accept that it is a part of you and the reality that we're in. It's like you're inside of your own mind of an insane asylum and there are so many versions of you well you can't hate all of you you know so how do you do that you have sympathy compassion and love and acceptance for what it is it doesn't mean you have to be around it, it doesn't mean you have to socialize with it or have dinner with it or anything like this here but it is a, a, an understanding that it is a part of you that you've accepted and once you accept it and forgive it it fades itself out because it becomes part of you, the one that you are. It's not no longer on the outside of you. You have brought it to yourself and love it for whatever it is. Because we would not know any of this shit if we didn't have the bad guys on the field. You yeah. know? So be appreciative for the characters who are playing the bad roles. Because that way we can see that what needs to be changed. We can choose on whether we want good or bad. Okay? This is our chance. But don't judge the bad side understand that it served its purpose to help you find your truth in the light. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's really important not to attach to things. Right. Don't let your energy be pulled in one direction or another. Just be yourself and observe and don't, don't have these massive judgments about this, that, or the other thing. Because right. they're being judged anyway. Mm -hmm. you well, know? I'm looking out at, you know, like whenever I see the news or anything like this here, it does show me the chaos. It does show me the bad things that are going on. But while I am watching it, um, it's like God's telling you, you know, uh, have faith in your heart or, or have faith without seeing. Well, what I am looking at, I know that there's something on the other side of that. So my scenario is, you know, it's changing. It, it's, it's glory. They're celebrating. I don't let what's being showed to me take away my belief, you know, right. because that is my chance to say, okay, I don't care what the, what's being shown to me. I know the truth. I know that there is joy and happiness in the world and heaven on earth is here. And this year keeps showing me this to try to distract me from that. Mm -hmm. So no matter what it is, it's, it's always try to find the up click of it or the positive in it. 
um, and, and don't get absorbed into it. Don't react to it. It's showing something bad. Don't you react bad to it because then you're just allowing it's you're giving them like your loose and they feed off of that. So yeah. uh, like with me, and my games, you know, I don't get ticked off in my games. You know, you some bitches need to burn and die. No, I can't do that. <laughs> because if I do that, then I'm feeding the loose. You know, there's where you make your choice. It's not real. It's just a game. It's fictitious. It's a hologram. And it does. It's not real. So why react to it real? Yeah. You know, it's the whole point. You want to bring order to chaos. And the only way you can do that is by you accepting that it's all one thing. And you decide to focus on the good in that. Because you can't have a beautiful black and white painting without each other. It can't exist. So you are creating that duality of the dark and the light. Mm -hmm. And we are like, we're amazing manifestors. Mm -hmm. So make sure you manifest what you want, not what you don't want. That's right. Yeah. That's really like to, uh, write down 10 things every day that you're grateful for. And you know that you have, whether you see them or not, write it down or speak it out loud because I do that every day. I'm very thankful for what people say, well, I don't see that. Well, that's you. That's not me. But I'm very grateful for the things that I have, all that has uh, been given and is still being given because mm -hmm. th this opportunity is allowing me to go forward and to be able to be the creator that I am and see it and create it as a positive and each direction that I go. That's how we go. We, we create as we go. It's not a sit and still kind of thing. It's a moving right. flow. Thing. Um, exactly. I did a class this morning. It was kind of a class, like a pure support group, but it was the one analogy that came through was if you're going to go in the flow of the river, like it's very important to be in flow. Mm -hmm. You're either going to float. There's certain times you're going to float in the canoe. And then there's other times that you're going to row down the river with the river's energy. Don't ever go back against right. the, you know, the flow of the river. But there's going to be times where it's time to jump on it and times where it's time to kind of sit and be with yourself and process. Right. Because maybe if you jumped on it at that time when you're feeling like you should process, then you're actually missing something. Right. And I think that we've been pushed into action um, quite a bit through the fight or flight behavior. Mm -hmm. So it's time to let go of fight or flight for sure. Right. Because you are yeah. the creator of it. So, I mean, you know, just like our ego, it comes in handy uh, to stop us from doing certain things. Don't touch fire. You're going to get burnt. You know, uh, it does come in handy. But for the most part, you are the one that's driving the car, not your ego. And as long as you're driving it, then you're an adult, you're competent, you know, you can square around these curbs and stuff like this. You're a lot easier than whenever you got that backseat driver telling you what to do. So, Yeah, don't listen to the backseat driver. That's right. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, that's really important. I think realizing how powerful we are and manifesting is mm -hmm. going to be the next thing that we really do is yeah. realizing how we basically manifest all day long mm -hmm. and what we're doing it by putting out all these big ideas and thoughts and stuff. Right. So if you're not paying attention, then you can manifest some wild stuff that maybe you didn't really Absolutely. want. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. I think now is the time to kind of be clued into what we're doing because a yeah. lot of us are on autopilot. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, that's important to not be right now. Right. Yeah. And, you know, and I've had people say, you know, well, what about my family members and friends and stuff like this here? They're so worried that either family members or their friends or stuff won't be going forward with them. And that's just putting out negative thoughts. Okay. If you want your version, your bubble to be your heaven on earth, then you are the creator and you can put those characters into your future version because you are creating them. You know, the version here might be able to, they're in a wheelchair, but you see them in the future in your reality as being able to walk, you know, and just hold on to that. No matter what this world is trying to show you and convince you, you know that, that the truth is better. 
and you take those thoughts and feelings with you into that version because you, you know you take your animals whatever you have to create it by putting it into the movie of your mm -hmm. own movie you know and also your words your thoughts are like comments you're shooting them out and they will you know come back to you okay like a boomerang so remember that you know that your thoughts and your words are just because you don't move your mouth doesn't mean that your thoughts aren't just as powerful it's just this here was a, a way of you expressing it in a more uh louder frequency so to speak um but yeah all your thoughts they go out and then they come back if you have a negative thought about somebody then somebody's going to have a negative thought about you but stay positive have positive thoughts about anybody and everything because then it, imagine all of that coming back to you at one time instead of it just being an individual thing yeah oh so, yeah my favorite thing too is if you are really not appreciating what someone is doing mm -hmm. and say, well, you know, I don't, I don't want to be involved with that. That's their choice to right. do what they're doing. And I'm just going to extricate myself from that. Mm -hmm. And some people get stuck in the loop. You know, one mm -hmm. thing that is important to know is we're not responsible for what other people are doing. That's right. Um, Cause we've taken on a lot of, Oh, I need to control the situation, mm -hmm. but we don't need to control the situation. We just need to control ourselves. That's right. In the situation. And then that actually, that consciousness changes the situation. It does. It absolutely does. Yeah. So, um, but you know, just try to, you know, stay positive. I know it's hard, my brothers and sisters, trust me. I know that it's hard on a daily basis. Um, but, the, you know, if you look at yourself as a scale, how many more positive thoughts did you have by the end of the day compared to how many bad thoughts you had by the end of the day? And whatever, the, whatever outweighs the other is what's going to flow into the next day. So try to make, even if you, you know, uh, take an hour or 30 minutes before you go to sleep to have a conversation with God, that's the last thing on your mind and you're taking that with you. You know, and therefore you shall wake up with it because it, it is something that was intentful before you fell asleep. So have a conversation. I do it a lot during the day. I've even had debates. I've even had arguments. But you know what? God has always proved me wrong. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> For the most part, calm down. I got this. You know, you don't know me. I, I got you. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, remember, you carry that spark within yourself, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. So talking to that spark within you, you're a piece of source. So you're That's carrying right. that God spark within you. Mm -hmm. So talk yeah. to it. Yeah. Cause my higher self has actually used my own words against me <laughs> because when I have a, a, a thing with my ego or whatever, I have this, this common thing that I'm like, you know, you need to shut the hell up. I'm gonna show you how this shit's done. And, uh, and then whenever I'm questioning God, it's more of like, you know, uh, let me show you how this is done. So, <laughs> so just chill out, you know, but uh, it is, it is a humorous way of, of putting me, putting me back to being humble, you know, uh, because I know that I can control my ego by having that mentality, chill out. I got this, you know, and yet my higher self is saying the same thing to me because it understands that I have these worries, fears, and doubts from time to time. We all do. You know, so, but just try to stay positive, knowing that your reality is what you created, positive or negative. Here's your mm -hmm. chance or your chance to choose. So, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, Lisa, this was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. It is. So go yeah. subscribe to her channel and you, she's going to be doing more things. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I'm really excited to see what you do on your channel, honestly. Yeah. A lot of wisdom. A lot of the other one that uh, people have been asking me about is to do a video on the Titans and the Giants. The story that I had shared with you about the giant or Titan walked mm -hmm. over my house. Uh, they have requested for me to slow that down and give it to them more clearly. And I have said, yes, I could do that. So that's another video that I'm going to be doing, my brothers and sisters, to help you understand a little bit better of what all that was. So Yeah, that'll um, be great. I know I saw a short video... Um, it made me kind of nauseated, honestly, Elisa. It was uh, it was the organ, so some kind of internal organ from a titan, and they cut it open because it was a rock, you know, and it was this bright red, 
and they cut it open and you could see the um where the veins were that came oh, up wow. inside of the organ and i i want to say it might have been a kidney wow. um but it was massive it was probably like 10 feet long or something wow and i was like oh and they're opening it up and turning it into these little spheres, you know, to sell. And I was just like, oh, this is so wrong. This feels so yes, yucky. It is. Yes, yeah. it is. But um, yeah, there is, a, there's a lot of, uh, if you Google stuff or you go out and you do your research, you'll find out that there was a lot of these here uh, areas that they found that looks either like organs or they are cutting into it and you can see that it's like blood and so forth, veins. It's very fascinating to know that we, something so little is cutting into something that's so, so massive and how it became petrified like that, you know, um, that goes along with uh, the Titan story that I'm going to be uh, sharing. Uh, to give you a better understanding of how that process actually happened. Yeah, um, that'll yeah. be great. I think yeah, that's it's actually very just freaky to think that we're walking around on or in and around something that's so much larger than ourselves mm -hmm. without realizing what it is. So, yeah, mm -hmm. there's a lot of large beings that have like created mounds of stuff that we have no idea that that's what it was. So that's true. Yeah. Well, you have a couple of rocks like that, don't you? Yeah, I have. Um, I got that like this kind of stuff yeah. is definitely from an organ of right. a titan. So that's, uh, I think, red jasper, maybe. Um, yeah. Wow. All Interesting right. stuff. So if it looks like it could come from a body, then maybe it did. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Wow. <laughs> yeah. I am really glad that you uh, have given me an opportunity to touch base with um, all of our brothers and sisters. I have missed you guys. I really have. Um, but I'm sure you understand that, you know, that I had life things <laughs> that I had to deal with too. And thank God I'm over the shingles. Thank God my shoulder is not as bad as it was. So, you know, yeah. as I, I told some ladies earlier, you know, um, getting old is not for the young. <laughs> so, no well and it's time to start reversing that too absolutely that's yeah. right no that's like damn bring on the med beds you know mm -hmm. i'm looking forward to that for all of our brothers and sisters too and there has been you know word out there that it seems like uh this here rv and currency reset it's like we've come so close to this here now with the information that's coming out a lot closer than we have with any other uh like last year or so forth it's just like dang gum we're just like right there come on flip the switch so yeah. i'm definitely holding on to that positivity for all of us because i know that it's a benefit to all of us um so just just hold that my brothers and sisters and refuse to settle for anything less you know have an owner for all i ain't settling for nothing less yep no. it's coming it's, it's coming is. quick it feels really good so mm -hmm. yeah thank you elisa thank you honey <laughs> and remember everybody you are everything that you see no exception so be kind to it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Bye.